everyone. I'd like to welcome today's guest. Her name's Dr. Dana Coriel. She's a board certified internist and a healthcare social media expert specializing in online strategy and content creation. Hi, Dana. How are you? Hi. Good. Thank you. I appreciate your asking me to be on. Yeah, absolutely. So I would love for you to give everyone a, a bit more information about your background and what you're currently doing to support people with their health, especially given the pandemic. Um, and you know, how, how you ended up becoming uh, where you are now. Well, so I am a traditionally trained medical doctor. I have earned a medical degree and I worked in um, as a primary care doctor in the field of internal medicine for somewhere around 15 years uh, and have experienced that side of uh, the my career. And six months ago, uh, I actually left clinical practice uh, in order to pursue this new and innovative aspect to our society, which is using the online world to communicate. Uh, now that, after having dabbled in the field for many years and also not only creating a brand for myself, the Dr. Coriel brand, which you can check out at drcoriel.com, but also um, a brand that encompasses other physicians using social media and that space in order to, um, you know, fulfill their dreams in many ways, whether it is um, doling out healthcare in new ways or it's maybe... Um, partaking in a pastime that they never had the ability to partake in before. There are so many amazing things we can do using social media that um, I'm that person that looks to help them to do it. So I created a group called SomiDocs and it started out initially as a physician only Facebook group, which continues to grow. It's doctors on social media, but also has uh, presence and other platforms. For example, on Twitter, we have over 11,000 followers. That's physician and non-physicians alike. And every week we hold a Twitter chat where we discuss a different topic. So there's a lot there. Um, and I know that we're going to delve into some of the specifics, especially where it comes to my own personal brand work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I think so many people are kind of being forced to move to social media, whereas before they kind of had more of a choice of whether they wanted to use it or not. Now it has become a necessity. And if you want to stay connected to people, which I think is so important given the current circumstances, then, you know, figuring out social media and how, how you can use that to your advantage is something that a lot of people struggle with. So it's great that you're, you're helping people like tap into that and be able to utilize that a bit more. Absolutely. So physicians in particular are really struggling in understanding social media because of many factors. First of all, because we're not trained in technology. Secondly, mm -hmm. we don't have time to tackle the um, social media aspect and, um, and thirdly, because I think it's got a bad rap through the years of being social, only in the last few years has it sort of taken a turn and become more, uh, okay, it become okay to use it professionally. So um, yeah, I think there is a great need for it. Now, the other thing I'm focusing right now is actually exploring my own place within that field and seeing where I can um, add most value uh, in terms of human connection, what fascinates me most is human connection. I also really love the idea of connecting. And I think that is one aspect of um, healthcare that I really loved was those really personal connections I was making with people behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. And my goal is to somehow find a way to do that um, in a on a grander scale using the online world. Mm -hmm. And so I am personally very much of an idea person. I like to think be, you know, out of the box. So I'm trying to constantly brainstorm through different ideas that I have to come up with ways for all of us to communicate and solve problems in that way. Yeah, 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 I, I completely resonate with that. I think because times are changing, all the time these days as well with everything that's going on. Um, people are trying to find new ways of, of getting their needs met. 
um, and having to learn all of these new softwares. Um, there's so many options available as well and it can be really overwhelming to people. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit more about some of the specific challenges that you think people are facing right now, you know, under conditions of social distancing um, and, and maybe feeling overwhelmed by social media and, and how that might be impacting on their health right now. Oh, absolutely. I think there is a great impact on our mental health as a society when all we hear about are these frightening and understandably frightening but these frightening news bits that are coming out of social media i think it's so important to use social media in the right way and the best way to use it is for connection because we're also thirsty for connections we've got no physical contact with people around us only the people in our very immediate life many people are now isolated more than before um we were already as a society very isolated and i think that um, social media is a double-edged sword in that because sometimes it helps us and sometimes it isolates us more so it's important to leverage social media in order to facilitate connection but it's also important to be careful because we want to connect on the things that actually improve our mental health so finding that balance between heeding advice out of that sort of all the frightening news that come out versus using social media for the beautiful connections that um, inspire us to be happier and I'm actually I'm actually looking for ways to personally solve that with the, with my talents. Cause over the years I've learned that I need to really utilize my strengths to create things that help society, even in small ways. So my newest project actually, and it's just going to be debuted and it's very simple in its um, initial stage is I would like to create um, somewhat of a, like a clue challenge very similar to an escape the box or very similar to games like scavenger hunts, but have it be very virtual. And the thought behind that is that um, it will be very engaging for people that are sitting home and sort of looking for something to do, right? I've had a lot of people that reach out and say, what are you doing? Like, what are your kids doing? What are you doing as a family? And we are very much of a game family. These kinds of things appeal to us. Even before COVID, for years, we live next to New York City. We go in and we do things that are very interactive. We've taken part in Sleep No More and Then She Fell, these really famous Broadway-like shows that are very interactive and fun. So I'm going to give it a try, again, with a background in healthcare, but also with a background of content creation that's very unique. I'm going to try to really engage people that are home and create um, challenges that are interactive and that is has the ability to include people no matter where they are in the world. So that's my newest project that I hope will really help people that are staying at home that maybe doesn't have to do with medicine per se, but has to do with engaging and maybe lifting up the spirit in different ways. Mm -hmm. So um, this would be something that people would do through Facebook or something like that. Right. So I am working on tweaking the details in order to make it better. And so I ask for everybody that is interested to please be patient as I make it better each time. But I originally wanted to do it in emails that are sent to participants that are spaced one after the other, each clue leading to the next. Mm -hmm. But I've decided that maybe initially I should actually start on Facebook in a Facebook group that I create for those who choose to opt in because email is kind of weird. Um, I beta tested it and some people had trouble getting some of the content bits that were video forms. Some of the hints are like really fun, like even little TikTok bits that I create um, that gives clues, mm -hmm. but they weren't able to access that for whatever reason. So I think just putting it all in a Facebook group during the course of the challenge is probably smarter. and it would probably be a challenge that lasts about an hour or so or an hour and a half. And that way people that opt in can not only play along, but they can actually do it against um, others that are opting in. So mm. and, and there, would, there would be a prize at the end. And so it's really exciting for people that like these kinds of not only games, you could do it at your own pace and not do it for the prize, but there's something about having a competition that's fun. And again, um, the clues are all different and some of them are very difficult. And I'm trying to find the balance between having it be super easy versus 
having a challenge so that it does become a competition that is fun to earn because you've actually solved something a little bit more out of the box. Yeah, and I like the idea of having a group as well because people can share their experiences after they've finished. And then, you know, it's kind of an indefinite thing then because as you have new challenges and new kind of um, programs that people can can work through, then it can just keep expanding that way. And you can use the feedback to to continuously improve it as well. Absolutely. And so that's what I'm looking to do. I mean, it might be layers. Like I would have a group that's literally just created for that specific uh, hunt slash uh, challenge mm -hmm. and then have each Facebook group for different challenges, but have like an encompassing group for the challenge aspect as a whole so that people can hear news coming out on when, when a new challenge comes out and things like that. It's, it's kind of an innovative concept, but I think it fits with so much of what we need right now. And yeah. I just, again, as a person who really appreciates games, I think games really solve so many issues in our society because games allow us to use, allows us to, games allow us to use our brains and they also allow us to connect in such unique ways. Mm -hmm. They allow team building, they allow us to work together, but also against one another. And it's just fun. And can you give an example of what some of the challenges within a game might look like just so people can get a sense of what it might be like yes so i have the ability to build um each challenge around a theme and i will do that moving forward but the first ones really are meant for the family so that you can enjoy it together, but you do need an adult there to solve some of those questions. So for example, some of the questions may um, brush on some pop culture, um, some pop culture things that only adults maybe could have seen, like a movie that maybe a child in the group that's doing it together didn't see, but the adult has. And so the adult, for example, would need to solve the riddle that is um, being presented by either solving the riddle, you know, in words, or there would be a content bit like a video, which we do need to watch. And it would be a minute that would sort of give some hints to the answer. Um, I want it to be not so straightforward. So again, some clues are very straightforward and other clues are a bit more, um, roundabout because it's meant to be challenging. Yeah. And I like the idea that you're kind of working together as a group as well, as a family. And well, that that's the thing. I wanted to really do something that was super fun that could get the whole family excited. I mean, I could certainly do one for children moving forward because I have the capability too, right? I could do it like medical related and help. But at the end of the day, this should be fun and it should be something that's a challenge. And then you, even though it's competing against other teams, you're doing it as a group, as the people in your family. And I did that on purpose because again, we so value the pluses that come with playing games as a family. It gets you together as a unit, right? So pre-COVID, we weren't stuck in the same place. In fact, everybody was kind of doing their own thing. Everyone's got nowadays their heads in the phone. And, and as a social media expert, I get it. I live it. My work is in my phone. But we need things like this. We need to find things that we love to do that we do together as a family because it brings back that team mentality and that like unit mentality. And the reason I like this especially is because it's not completely electronic free, meaning I realize that everyone's competing against each other and they've got the ability to like Google answers. So I'm building this in a way where you can... Actually, you're, you should be Googling answers because the answers aren't necessarily going to be gotten by Googling. So yeah. you've got to use your brain and sort of look at a video and figure things out. And you Googling isn't necessarily going to give you an answer, but maybe part of the answer you're going to need to Google. I love that because you're also teaching basic life skills as well. Totally. Yeah. Exactly. And so that's where, again... This is just an initial thing. I'm just debuting it, but I've got so many ideas up here about how we can go from platform to platform and people have to sort of use their skills to get answers and it can be very sophisticated. So 
I'm taking it slow. I'm excited about it, but this is definitely something that I um, am excited to debut um, in hopefully just a few days in terms of like testing it out. Yeah. And, and I imagine that if you do decide to bring it out on different social media platforms, then that will give people an opportunity to learn how to use those different platforms and how to, you know, engage in communities. In oh, different- for sure. I think it's just community building is in general comes from exercises like this. That's why, for example, there are businesses that are that hire companies to come in and do team building, do it through games. Mm-hmm. Games are just so valuable for all of us. And people really, they love games more than they think they do. So even if it's not for a competitive reason, just to have to solve something, it's mm-hmm. just fun. You know, yeah. it gets us feeling good about ourselves. And so um, I'm excited about this. And so even though I don't have all the technology worked out and everything is not sophisticated at the moment, I can tell you that if anybody that's listening to this has an interest in finding out more, they could check out my website where I'm hoping, because I already have traction there. I already have an audience that follows drcoriel.com. I will be putting up like a section on it for those who are interested. And then hopefully that'll grow as this becomes bigger. Um, but again, I've got many projects lined up. It's th- this is just one project out of the many I've taken on, mm-hmm. um, both in the personal Dr. Coriel brand, but also in the doctors on social media or so me docs brand well thank you so much dr dana um if, if anyone would love to to hear more about th- these games these challenges definitely go to dr dana's website um and yeah check out the rest of the videos in our series this is number one but we'll have some more coming out very soon over the next couple of months um, yeah thank you again mm-hmm.